Hi, thanks for coming to see our video. I'm John Grubb from 4kcc.com. In this video, we're going to look at the Pick Stitch app. If this is your first time here, don't forget to hit the subscribe button and then the notification bell. If you've been here before, thanks for coming back. And if you learned something new along the way, hit that thumbs up icon, please. Okay, let's get started. When I first posted this picture on Instagram and Facebook, a lot of people asked me, John, how did you get all those pictures in one picture? And how did you get those nice rounded edges? Well, I told them I use the app Pick Stitch. And that's what today's video is all about. First, let's talk about some things about Pick Stitch. It's available in the Windows Store, the App Store for iPhone and iPad, the App Store for iMac, kind of, and the Google Play Store. However, it's not exactly the same everywhere. In the Windows Store, for example, the cost is $1.99 plus tax. On a Windows computer, though, it really doesn't work well. There are limitations like the inability to add a video or you can't resize frames. Uh, the truth is, I really don't recommend it on the Windows machine. Um, I do have it on mine, and I use it there occasionally when I want something simple. But if I want something a little more complicated or want to make certain adjustments, I'm going to do it on some other platform. In the iMac store, it's not actually called just Pick Stitch. It's called Image Collage Designer Pick Stitch Maker. There's no free version, and the cost is $14.99. However, it's far more diverse than other versions of Pick Stitch. Here's a screenshot, and you'll be able to see that it's different than Pick Stitch anywhere else. If there's enough interest, I'll make a video just for this version of the app. Otherwise, this will be the last you'll actually hear about it in this video. Now, the App Store for iPhone and iPad, there's a free version. However, everything doesn't work on the free version. If you want to buy it, it's $29.99 a year, or you can make a one-time payment of $129.99. The Google Play Store. Big Stitch is free also, but it has ads. You can remove the ads and get access to extra features for $3.99. So you can see there's a lot of differences across the platforms. And today in this video, we're going to take a look at two versions. We're going to look at it on the iPhone, and we're going to look at it on the Android. So let's dig in. I'm going to do three demos. The first one on the iPhone. You should watch it even if you have an Android. And the reason for that is I'm going to explore some of the additional options just in that video and some of them do exist in Android, but it will give you a better feel for how to use Pick Stitch. Then my second demo will be on an Android. My third demo will be back to the iPhone, but I'm gonna put a video in. Unfortunately, you cannot do that on the Android app, so I have to show you on the iPhone. If you only have iPhones, you could skip the second one, the Android demo, if you prefer. All right, let's get started. I'm going to open the Pick Stitch app. You can see that the first thing that comes up are frames. As I scroll across, it's everything from one picture to four pictures to six to eight, and there's even a custom frame. Also, notice at the top where it says Classic and Fancy. If I click on Fancy, you can see there are fancy frames that you could use if you wanted to. Now, one of the things that you need to think about is, think about the pictures you're going to use before you pick out the frame. In this one, I have four pictures that are basically square, so I pick out this frame. When I click on the plus sign, it wants me to pick out the pictures I want to use. So I have a folder already, and I'm going to pick out the pictures. You can see at the bottom, as I pick them out, a minus sign appears. So now I have four pictures. I take whatever picture I want, 
and I'm going to drag it to one of the blocks. As you can see, it pops up. At this point, I can do different things to it at the bottom. I can draw on it. Um, I can crop it. And that's what I'm going to choose to do this time to show you. So I clicked crop and I'm going to pull in where you see the little blue sections. And I'm going to crop this picture to where I want it to be in the frame. And also at the bottom, you'll see you can crop them to certain sizes. I'm doing it all manually. And once I have it exactly where I want it, I'm going to click done up in the upper right hand corner. And there it is done again. And now if I wanted to, I could put a frame around it. So I clicked on the frames and I'm just trying a few different frames here to give you an idea of what it could look like if you wanted to. I'm actually not going to use a frame, but I just wanted you to see the frame option. All right, I'm going to get out of that. I'm going to click done again and then done. There's my picture. Now I can slide that picture up and down just by using my finger on the iPhone. And we'll get back to what I'm going to do there a little bit later. What I want to do next is drag the next picture. And you will notice as I put the pictures in the squares, at the bottom they show that a check mark. All right, so again I used a second picture. I'm taking my fingers and expanding the picture and making the view larger. Again, I can move it up and down and maybe sideways. It just depends. You have to try it. I'm going to take my third picture. And this time, I'm going to show you the filters. If I click on a filter, you can see how it changes the picture. Now, I kind of like this dark filter, so I'm going to leave that. And it's applied it. Again, I'm going to click Done. And I move the picture inside the frame the way I want it. If I want to make it bigger, I just use my fingers and make it bigger. Or I can leave it exactly how it is. The fourth one, I'm going to do something different. What I want to do is put text on this. So I click for text. I'm going to type my text. In this case, I'm typing, Gus never gets on this chair. Now you can see I can move the text around any way I want, but guess what? You can't read that. The first thing is I can expand it to make it a little bigger, but I want a different font. So I click at the bottom where it says font, and then I can scroll up and down and find what fonts I want to use. And I don't go too far for this. I find one that's kind of bold. There we go. I have the bolder text, but I still can't really read it. Maybe I can change the color. Click on the color for the font, and I can adjust the slides at the bottom. I can adjust the transparency, which is the bottom slide, and I can make the font different colors. But I also want to, I want to leave the font white, but I want to change the background. I click on background, same thing comes up. I can change the color of the background. I can also change alignment by clicking on that. And finally, I adjust it where I want it. And when I do, I click Done. Now, I have all four pictures I have to adjust so I can read what I wrote. Next, I want to show you how you can adjust the frame. Click on Resize, and then you can move your frame and resize the lines. As you can see, that picture in the upper left-hand corner, I needed that lower to see all of Gus's body. And then I have to adjust the other ones, maybe make them bigger, move them around, especially the bottom right one so that I can see my text. And when I'm done, I click resize. Now at the top, there are some adjustments that I can make. I can make the corners round. And then I can put a background on. I'm going to put a Christmas background. And I just go through and pick one out. And there's the background. At this point, I need to export the picture. I can send it directly to social media. I can send it in a message.
But what I normally do is I always click and save it in my album. Then I can decide where I want to put it and what I want to do. By the way, those options at the top, they are not in the free version. Okay, here we are on the Android. And again, same thing. I try to figure out what pictures I want, what size frame I should use, how many pictures, how many, what size do I want horizontal, vertical, square. So I picked out four pictures. As soon as I pick them out in the Android app, they immediately go in the squares. I don't have to drag them like I did in the iPhone. So I go ahead and I do the same adjustment though with my fingers. I can adjust them up and down. I can click resize and change the frames again. And then when I'm done, I just click resize again and it's turned off. Once again, at the top, there are options to make the edges rounded, to put a background on, and they have free backgrounds. I'm going to put an animal print. I'm going to install it because it wasn't installed before. And then I'm going to click on it and pick out an animal print as my background. Again, these options at the top are not free, but in the Android, it's only $3.99, probably worth the money. And again, I just click however where I want to save it. Do I want to send it an Instagram? Whatever. I can just do it all right from there. All right, the third one, we're back to the iPhone. And this time, I want to do something with the video. I have four pictures of trains, and one of them is a video. I'm going to pick out something with four, but the video is vertical. The pictures are kind of square. I'm going to go ahead and pick the one I want, which I just did. I'm going to click on a plus sign and then go find my pictures and video. I'm going to click on them and you'll see them come in the bottom. The negative means I could hit that and get rid of that picture and find another one. Once I have four, I'm back to the frame. They're at the bottom. I'm going to start with the video. But the video is longer than I want it to be. I'm going to click trim at the bottom. When I do that, you'll see the trim window come up. I'm going to move from the beginning and trim that because I don't want all of the video. The train is too far away. Once I'm done with that, I can click done. And now my video is there. That's all I'm going to do with the video for right now. I'm going to drag my other three pictures. I'm going to look at them again. I can make adjustments, but in this case, I'm not going to do anything. I'm going to leave them just as they are. I'll just click done. And I'll put all three of the pictures in the frames. Okay, once again, I can resize and adjust the frames. I don't need the video to be as wide. I can go ahead and make that more narrow. I noticed that the pictures were in the wrong order. The picture where the train was the farthest away was in the middle. All I have to do to change that is grab it and drag it to the top frame and it will replace that one and send that one to where it came from, which in this case is the middle. I have everything in now. You'll notice that because there's a video, there's a little preview window. I'll click on preview and the video will play and you'll actually be able to hear the train and see the train coming and that's how it's going to work. Now I can let it play all the way through or I can hit the X and stop it before it's finished. I know it's working so I don't really have to see the entire video. Also at the top, again, with the paid versions, I can put the rounded edges. Um, I can put a background. I'm going to pick Christmas again, but a different one this time. And I'm back to where I can export it and save it, send it, whatever I want to do with it. And that's how it works with the video in the iPhone version of PickStitch.